YouTube side as well. Welcome to the YouTube side. Thank you for joining us for another Sumo Saturday. And I will, uh, you know, full disclosure, I'm having some drinks because I had a bad day at work today. It was the, uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! pre-release. So I had to deal with that for the first two hours of my shift. And while I was doing that, you know, at work today, uh, you know, just wandering around my own store. Well, it's not my store, but wandering around the store, you know, doing my job, come across like a half a dozen bugs, crickets, cockroaches. And I'm just like, I don't want to deal with today. So I had a few drinks to loosen up myself. Oh, actually a few. I'm in the middle of my second one. So I'm not having it. I'm not having it. <laughs> but uh, today we are going to be covering Tochi Musashi in his 15 days of Judeo, which uh, there is a fun fact about his stat. Uh, if I wanted to look that up once again, he is not the only person, even within the past 10 years, to debut in Judeo and earn the U show. And if you're on YouTube, you can see that in the description down below. What you will be seeing is that uh, there is a good handful of names that have joined him, or rather that he has joined at that rank. The last time it happened was with Tomokaze back in 2018. And even before that, you have names like uh, Ichinojo, Endo, Chiyotairyu, Tochi Noshin, for all you Tochi Noshin fans out there, and even the Yokozuna Teruno Fuji himself have won the U shows in their debuts at Judio. What does this mean for Tochi Musashi's career? Well, we don't know because he's still just a rookie. But considering the class of sumo wrestlers he has entered, uh, alongside the likes of you know Musashi Maru and other Yokozuna. I do have high hopes for him, and I have had high hopes for him since his debut, and I do hope he does continue to succeed, and, well, truthfully, I don't think there's going to be anything that could realistically hold him back. So, aside from, you know, the his actual skills, which we will be taking a look at today, Uh, I truthfully can't see anything or any reason to not really hop on the Tochi Musashi hype train. And it is worth noting that every man afterwards who has earned the U show has uh, also gone on to get a winning record in the very next Basho from like Judeo 3 or 4 or 5, depending on however they fell. And uh, even in Ichi Nojo's case, he went 13-2 and two and lost the playoff for his... Uh, no, tomorrow. Oh. Two. No, we're going out tomorrow. All right. So his first match is up against Roga, who uh, Roga is someone who has been, you know, at the very top of the third division for quite a while. And uh, it is unfortunate to see how uh, Roga has spent so long up there, but he is finally making it up. He is going to debut in Judeo at the next Basho. So it's not like Tochi Musashi has a weak opponent here. And uh, as soon as the page loads for Tochi Musashi, I can get a, a better idea. Uh, don't tell me the... Uh, no. Database is down again. Is it, uh, you know, that every 15 minutes it goes down type vibe? Yeah. All right. So I can't use the database, but that is okay. So this first match of the tournament... Toji Musashi, not really an unknown as far as my channel goes, because he is someone that we've been covering in my uh, Young Guns videos, which if you haven't seen it yet, this past Wednesday, I did release a Young Gun roundup, and a lot of these stars that we are seeing come up into Judeo, I have covered within the past year, so be sure to take a look at that video. Uh, but Toji Musashi, former Kanno, I've been high on him, and I am looking forward to see him go. As you know, the format of these videos is we are going to uh, watch it at full speed, either once, twice, or maybe even a couple of times. 
talk through it, how it goes, and then break it down step by step. And uh, Tochi Musashi, well, he does have four losses, so you would think that this might take a, a little bit faster than usual, but uh, we'll see. So Tochi Musashi versus Dolga. Tochi Musashi getting the inside grip under the arm, getting the outside left, going for the pull, and pulling Dolga right around. And that's a... Uh, that, that's another thing that's going to be very nice about covering someone in judo. You don't have all those WWE camera angle zoom in and out and different angle things. We just have the straight on angle here and that's going to make it a lot easier to view. But you can see almost right immediately off the Tachi Ai, Tochi Musashi getting that right hand up and inside is going to get him a little bit of an advantage. So for future reference, Tochi Musashi is going to be red all, or blue. All of his opponents are going to be pink. So right off the Tachi Ai, Dolga kind of stands his ground here. He puts out that big left foot to try to, you know, stabilize himself. Whereas Toji Musashi, his Tachi Ai is a little bit more reckless. He's already taking that second step so he can push forward, get that right hand inside. And we can't see it, but the left hand is wrapping around the, uh, the outside left there. So let me see if I can't make this a little bit smaller. So already... Roga has a good defensive stance, but Tochi Musashi just has more power and is able to pull up. Even though he doesn't have a grip on the belt, which you can kind of see right here, he doesn't have that grip on the belt, but he does have that right hand inside that he's going to be forcing the body upwards with, as well as, you know, again, that left hand outside is going to be what he has most of his control with. So from here, we can see him pushing forward. He has the right hand up on the chest, and this left hand is up here controlling this arm. So that means Roga can't use that inside right to grip the belt. And already, Roga, again defensive, is using this left hand outside to try to block Tochi Musashi from getting that right hand inside. So full defense from Roga here is what's going to make him fall backwards and find himself in a vulnerable position where now Tochi Musashi locks in the grip and he's going to start swinging Roga all the way around. And, you know, Roga having started off defensively, now he's kind of at Tochi Musashi's mercy. So big, strong grip on that outside left being stood up once again. But now Tochi Musashi with a really nice look here. He sits his hips back over his legs. Nice bend in the knees. It's a bit of a messed up leg over here I drew. And he's using all that leverage to pivot and throw Roga with that left outside. He doesn't even need that right inside, but that right inside you can kind of see is pulling as well. So, you know, two-pronged attack right there. Roga, because he didn't really offer any resistance at the Tachi Ai and hasn't offered any resistance thus far in the match, it's very easy for Tochi Musashi to just you know, pull him at his own whim. And from there, Tochi Musashi gets a really nice, clean first victory of the tournament. And, you know, truthfully, it couldn't have been much easier. And now I need to look for where is my... There you are. My folder went away from me for a second. But next up... We have day two. I don't know who he is fighting just yet because, uh, once again, the uh, database is like down right now. But he is uh, Judeo 14, so he always usually fights earlier on in the day. His uh, opponent is Takakento here on day two. Takakento has been between the second and the third divisions, so he, he's one of those veterans that you kind of see floating around here to act as a gatekeeper more or less and uh i will get to those messages that showed up during the first breakdown but uh welcome back jonathan and uh, yes rube i do think that uh he won't be a fluke i hope he isn't a fluke because if he was then i would be a little upset about that but uh hold on oh i do have it open already i'm a little dumb that's okay but yes, day two up against Taka Kento. Let me take a sip and get into the match. Here we go, Tochi Musashi versus Taka Kento. 
Saka Kento with a nice initial charge there, but Tochi Musashi trying to fight back for the inside and goes for that outside left throw yet again. So here you can see Taka Kento actually has the better Taji eye here, but Tochi Musashi, really great ring awareness. Like, we're going to break it down at a slower speed, but watch it at full speed. Watch his feet right here. He knows exactly where his feet are are gonna fall like immediately after that back foot hits the Tawada he shifts his body around gets the grip on the belt and goes for this throw right here it's all like one swift motion really nice calculation right there and we can see again right off the Tachi eye Takakento double inside Tochi Musashi this outside right just kind of floating not really doing anything and well, let me draw with it it's not letting me draw. That's weird. Let me reopen Epic Pen real quick. Because it is a little bit of a bitch sometimes. Or rather, this would be the first time it was. <laughs> there we go. My little uh, John Madden tool. Here we go. But you can see this outside right isn't really doing anything for Tochi Musashi. And because of that, oops, because of that, Takakento, with these double insides, is able to stand up Tochi Musashi and get a really nice push. We can already see, though, Tochi Musashi trying to grip the elbow here so he can pull to uh, Takakento in and probably try to go for Yotsu. But Takakento is wise to it. Pushes away with that big right hand and pulls that left arm back. And you can kind of see it in this motion. He pushed away and is bringing that arm back so he can fire again. And brought this arm down so, again, he can follow up later as well. So, right now, it's Takakento in control. And that left arm kind of misfires. Glances off the shoulder, so that's a lot of force being missed out on, while Takakento he's able to scoop the arms up and parry. He's parrying with both arms right here to try to get inside Takakento, but Takakento pulls back that left arm and puts that forearm forward. You can see getting right across the chest there while keeping that right hand in and he's going to try to push back against the chest. So Really nice pushes right there. This time the left arm does not miss from Takakento getting straight to the neck of Tochi Musashi. And Tochi Musashi, you can see him again. He's scooping up underneath to try to deflect these attacks. And right there, he did get a good hand to the armpit, which rocked Takakento to the side. And that forces Takakento to go down now. So Takakento diving in for the belt. We can see, again, this footwork down here from Tochi Musashi. It's really nicely done. His feet are going to hop around this way as he rotates the body around. He gets the grip on the outside left, and he's going to use all this momentum. All these right arrows are going to whoop, turn around Takakento as he goes for the throw here. So just watch the feet again. Big hop around very risky maneuver because if Takakento is more square and head on, then he just charges straight through Tochi Musashi. But you can see Tochi Musashi, he's going to keep pulling these feet around. This arm, this hand is on the belt through the body, and he's going to use all that momentum to just carry Takakento out of the ring. And right there, really nice tippy toe. He's throwing that back leg up into it so he can get more leverage going down this way. It's... A well-executed throw, and, you know, again, if Takakento was just, like, an inch more to the inside or to his right, Tochi Musashi's left, that might have ended completely differently. But, very nice quickness at the edge for Tochi Musashi to get the really nice throw at the end. And what a throw it was. <laughs> Tochi Musashi... 2-0 after the first two days. And, you know, as one of these rookies that I have been looking at, have been excited for on this come up, this makes me very happy. I'm like, okay, he's 2-0. He has a good start. He's not going to fall back down to the third division, hopefully, because 
getting out of that third division is painfully difficult for a lot of guys. So let's see. Day three. We're gonna see uh, that's Takakento versus Keen Bolzam. We have uh, Tochi Musashi versus Gonoyama, two of my favorite rookies. Thank you for the compliment, Vladimir, and welcome to the stream. So let's see if the database is back up again. And it still looks like it's loading, so I can't get more information about this head-to-head -head matchup or anything about uh, Gonoyama even. But we do know for sure that both of these guys are very new to the division. They are rookies in the division. I'm looking forward to seeing both of them. And uh, I'm kind of trying to write up, you know, the storyline at the time. But at this point, this early on in the tournament, it's just, you know, I hope both these guys succeed. They're both really cool. I want to see both of them in that top division sooner rather than later. They're both really good at what they do. One of them is 2-0, and one of them is 1-1. and and I really kind of hope the one and one guy wins so he doesn't fall. So here we go. Tochi Musashi on the right versus Gonoyama. Tochi Musashi gets the grip on the outside left once again and tries to go for the throw right off the Tachi Eye, but it doesn't work. But he goes for the throw in the middle of the ring again. Second try doesn't work. And the third try is going to be the charm with that left outside. And at this point, if you haven't noticed the pattern, it is that Tochi Musashi heavily favors the left outside. That could change in the future, but we're gonna see Tochi Musashi immediately goes for it. Like, it's no question. He's just headed straight for the belt and gets it immediately. And when he gets it immediately, this nice grip right here, he's gotta have a good amount of grip strength to keep that grip on that belt. But so once he gets this grip, he's gonna try to go for this throw. Look at that hand right there. Nice, strong on the belt. He's gonna try to bring back those hips and swing it around for the throw right here. You can see this, uh, you know, solid right leg. He has nice tree trunk to stand on. It looks like he's trying to kick up this uh, back leg too so he can swing it up and go for some more momentum this way. But it doesn't really work because you can kind of see Gonoyama is underneath him enough that he could just kind of push through him. Gonoyama widening his stance out a bit too so he can kind of catch himself on Go uh, Tochi Musashi's body it means that this throw is not going to work. It, but he does keep the grip under the arm on the belt, which is kind of surprising because a lot of the time that grip might be broken. Toji Musashi, though, nice grip strength, keeps the hand on the belt. You can see it right over here. And Gonoyama is obviously on the defense. So now, Toji Musashi pulling back, to Gonoyama pushing away from the Tawada. And Gonoyama, you can kind of see he's fighting off this right hand from Toji Musashi. That right hand right there, I think Gonoyama has a grip around the wrist and is trying to keep that hand away from the belt so he can't lock in that inside right and go for some more yotsu so he can, like we saw on day one, go for the pull with that right arm at the same time he goes for the, uh, the throw with that outside left. So trying to play the defense there, Koji Musashi is going to say, okay, let's try it again from the middle of the ring in just a second. You can see, even though he doesn't have a grip on the belt, he's pulling at the fat. He's pulling at the belly of Gonoyama. He's going to pull. He's going to rotate. He's going to pivot. He's going to try to get all this force to try to throw Gonoyama in the middle of the ring right here. And he does get his legs in a good position to get Gonoyama to hop around. You can see he got this big meaty leg right in the way so Gonoyama his leg you know it was back here had to go through that and now he's brought it up into this you know weird position that he needs to soon plant that down try to get this leg around so he can keep his stance centered square and uh not be easily pushed over basically and he does bring it down enough saves himself on the Tawada and we're going to see Toji Musashi still trying to pull back. A little bit of artifacting there. Still trying to pull back as 
uh, Goroyama uses the Tawada to push forward. That little bit of leverage always gives a nice push forward. Gonoyama trying to push at the same time as Tochi Musashi going for a pull once again. Nice position on the leg. You can see it's getting in the way of this big thigh. And because this has nowhere to go, the rest of Gonoyama's body is going to fall around. And he's going to have to try to catch himself with that left foot again. Or try to bring this foot inside to try to stabilize. Which, that's always not a good position to be in. Because he's... Gonoyama is the one off balance. In a lot of other situations that we see in the top division, if this throw doesn't work from Tochi Musashi, Gonoyama will just plant this other foot and then push through the hips, like the side assault. But because the the leg gets in the way, because Tochi Musashi is performing this throw well enough and he's actually hopping that leg forward... You can see he hopped that leg forward to keep it in front of Gonoyama's right leg. That's acting as a barrier that now Gonoyama can't recover from. So this throw is just going to go out of bounds. And Gonoyama, his only hope is to try to use this momentum to, you know, grip inside, right? Try to go for the throw himself, but everything is already going against him. Tochi Musashi with the really nice throw. And I think even if he didn't... Or uh, even if Tochi Musashi put that right hand down to protect himself, I think they would have called it in his favor. Gonoyama taking the loss right there, right on the chin. Tochi Musashi 3-0 after three days, and I'm very impressed with him. I like him a lot. I know uh, some other people don't exactly like him because he henkered Kaisei, which is very fair. And because, uh, you know, I think he does perform another henka at some point in this tournament, but... Uh, I'm hype. I'm I'm riding high on Tochi Musashi. Tochi Musashi versus Oshoma in this next matchup. Oshoma, another one of our uh, favorite rookies. I'll start from Oshoma. But at this point, again, I'm you know personally me. I'm hoping Oshoma wins this match because I don't want to see him fall back down to Judio. The last thing I want to see or uh, fall back down to Makushita. Because the last thing I want to see are any of these guys struggling in that third division without a salary. And it is very, very hard to make it back up from that third division. Like, it's a big wall that they have to jump back over. For me, it's 1 a.m. Oji Musashi, 3 and 0. Oh. Oshoma, 1 and 2. Oji Musashi immediately tries for that outside left. And Oshoma just kind of crumbled under that initial charge if i didn't know any better i would have said oshoma is probably fighting injured but he did finish out the tournament he wasn't injured but again this is just a really strange win here i think it's mostly uh oshoma isn't able to bring like try to watch this foot back here it's going to step to the side, and then he doesn't bring it around to catch himself before he falls. And I think that's really what happens here. I think it's more him losing than it is Tochi Musashi winning. Because we could see, once again, Tochi Musashi attempting that left outside. This, uh, I would say, keep watching this back left foot of uh, Oshoma. Welcome home, brother. Oshoma, you kind of can't see it through Tochi Musashi's body, but you can, you know, infer that the foot is still back here behind uh, the leg. That's supposed to be my really bad rendition of, you know, like a Bigfoot drawing. I don't, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> but uh, I think it's just that leg collapses under the pressure, like... There really isn't anything Tochi Musashi is doing here, except we saw him go for that outside left again. He misses it, and now they're kind of head-to-head, -head, shoulder to shoulder. And well, he just falls. So Tochi Musashi with a fast win there. Not really much else to say about it. Not very good, honestly. <laughs> Like, we could watch this as many times as we want. There really isn't anything going on here. <laughs> Thank you for the follow to uh, L Mike 1265. 
Oopsies. Uh oh, what did I just do? There we go. But yeah, not not really too much else to say about that match. Did your defensive tactics recertification this week? Nice. Hope it went well. But yeah, not really anything to say about that match, which kind of sucks, but that's life. Tochi Musashi, 4 0. Day 5. I would love to tell you if anything changes on day 5, but the Sumo database is still not working for me. So, day 5. Let's see. That's Oshoma versus Takakento. See, now I have to go looking for his matches too, because he's going to be fighting higher and higher up the Banzuke. Here we go. Tochi Musashi versus Chiyo Sakai. Now, Chiyo Sakai is, uh, he's a fun guy because he's, uh, you know, in his late 20s compared to Tochi Musashi, who's in his early 20s. And it, Chiyo Sakai only debuted in this t uh, second division. Or wait, is he in his late 20s or is he 32? I don't remember. But uh, anyway, you know what I'm saying. Chiyo Sakai is an old man that made his debut last tournament compared to Tochi Musashi, who made his debut this tournament, and they're both 4-0. So really nice storylines coming head-to-head. -head. And the question is, who is going to be 5-0? Is it going to be the veteran of the third division who finally made it to the top after so long? Or is it going to be this upstart rookie who only just started pro sumo this past year? You know, it's it's a nice story between the two of them. But... uh I can't really say there's a rivalry between them. This is likely the first time they ever fought each other inside the ring. Learn some new stuff in your defensive class, and you just turned 54 on Wednesday. Nice, happy birthday. Glad to see you're still uh, kicking it physically, too. I need to get back to the gym. <laughs> we started going back to the gym, but... uh. It's been a, a really annoying for... A lot of a long drawn out stupid story reason. <laughs> anyway, Chiyo Sakai versus Tochi Musashi. Let's see how this one goes. And I will say, if uh, the Sumo database is still down later, I won't be able to do the play the, against the Banzuke game. So I'm gonna have to do that on my own time. I'll start from Chiyo Sakai. Tochi Musashi trying for that outside left, opting for some uh, Tsupati instead, and because he couldn't get the initial grip, he goes for the slap and slaps down Chiyo Sakai. So, this match, it's weird because it looks a little sluggish, but Chiyo Sakai is doing a lot of work to try to push back uh, Tochi Musashi. Like, you can see... A lot of what happens in this match is dictated by Chiyo Sakai pushing forward, manipulating Tochi Musashi, and Tochi Musashi just at the very end steps to the side, gets the slap down. So again, right off the Tachi eye, this is probably going to be a recurring theme for the rest of the tournament. Tries for the outside left, but he misses it. He, he's a little too far off the belt, but he is trying to bring these feet around so he can dive for the belt. It's likely that Chiyo Sakai is doing the same thing on the other side. So they're kind of just playing ring around the rosy with each other. And they're trying to get to the other person's, you know, outside. Which, that's not going to happen. So now they both have to opt to go for Tsupati up high. Which, you know, like we saw the other day, Tochi Musashi trying to keep this forearm in so he can deflect it upwards. Chiyo Sakai trying to go for the face, and like I mentioned, at full speed, Chiyo Sakai is the one dictating a lot of this. Toji Musashi doesn't really have an offense, because we can see him pulling back the arm. He's going to strike again. He's going to pull it back, strike again. I, I like to call it a swim move, but it, it's like kind of a reverse swim because he's pulling the hand back. <laughs> But it is, uh, they're matching each other up high with those Tsupati. You can see, again, Tochi Musashi at uh, this point as well tries to make that dive for the left belt. And he's not going to get it there either. So Chiyo Sakai pushing him back off. Uh, Tochi Musashi going for a deflection here. You can see him scooping with these inside right. I have to assume he's doing the same with that inside left as well, scooping while Chiyo Sakai is trying to do those 
uh, Takakesho full bodied, like head and hands, trying to push forward with every single fiber of his being. But Tochi Musashi is going to uh, step to the side and kind of deflect it. And now at this point, uh, Chiyosakai, getting he's trying to push forward yet again. And he's not going to be prepared for the simple step to the side, slap down on the back. Because he is pushing forward through the body, and you can see this next step is going to go straight. It's not going to swing around to try to match. It's going to go perfectly straight forward. This right leg is kind of, you know, stanced up. It's not moving. And he's looking forward he's not really you know if he was pointing his foot out wide then he'd be able to pivot on it a little bit better but because of his current stance because of the way he's squared up right now and that's something i usually compliment a wrestler for shoulders hips and even though the foot is a bit back the feet are still pointing in that same direction i guess more like that he's moving forward but he's not ready for the sidestep from Tochi Musashi, and that's going to be his downfall. Right there. And you can see again, this foot is not going to be able to swing around because he's squared, 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 all facing this way. Like, even if his, sho if his shoulders were a little bit skewed, he'd be able to try to pull the hips around and stumble forward this way. But... That's not really how it happened because he was too squared up going in the wrong direction, kind of. So that's how Tochi Musashi takes advantage of Chiyosakai. And even if Chiyosakai catches himself here, this is a very advantageous spot for uh, Tochi Musashi who can just hand on the belt, go for a throw. And we've seen most of his wins so far have been those outside left hand throws. So really not too much to do from that position for Chiyosakai. Who falls onto his hands and Tochi Musashi five and zero. Oh. So I'm really high on him at this point in the tournament. Five and zero. Oh. He's looking great. Fantastic work. And really, the question is: Is he going to start losing to you know these kind of other rookies? He's already beaten Konoyama, but he still has to fight Oshoma. He has to fight Hoku Seiho. And, spoiler alert, he loses to a few of those guys. Poetic Wine, thank you for your subscription. At work, no sound. And it has been a while. Ten months. Thank you so much. I really appreciate all of the support. And even on the YouTube side, I appreciate the support. No matter how you're watching, I'm glad that you're all joining us for some Sumo Saturdays. So, day six now. Let's see if the... Uh, See if the database wants to work now. I'm going to check between every match because sometimes it's literally minute to minute on whether or not it wants to work. <laughs> yeah, it's not working. So day six. I don't know who his opponent is. Not a good effort from. Let's see. But we have to scroll through and try to find who he's fighting. That's uh, Taka Kento versus Chiyo Sakai. Dochi Musashi versus Kitana Waka. Kitana Waka, 21 years old. So technically, Tochi, Saka uh, Tochi Musashi is uh, his senior, older than him. But uh, Kitana Waka has been in judo for a little bit longer. Oops. So that was a. <laughs> Alrighty, so. 2 and 3 for Kitana Waka, 5 and 0 oh for Tochi Musashi. I'm kind of hoping Tochi Musashi keeps winning. I want to see something big for his uh, debut. The rookie can stay undefeated. Tochi, Musashi. Tochi Musashi struggling to get that initial grip, but after Kitana Waka kind of flubs it, having Tochi Musashi at the edge gives up that inside grip kind of slipped up the body there and you can kind of see it we're we're gonna go slow for this one or for the next one but for this one fast one more time just watch uh kitana waka's left outside arm it's gonna kind of slip up the body he kind of misfires on that left arm and that's what gives a uh, tochi musashi that inside right outside left combo and he pushes forward for the win so right here 
once again, Tochi Musashi going for the outside left. And Kitano Waka, he's kind of got a weird lean. So off the Tachi eye, he's got that left shoulder lower than the right shoulder, and he's diving for that inside left on the belt. That's exactly what he wants, and that's exactly what he's going to get. Immediately locks it in, and you can see it. It went from here all the way up to here in a split second. So this is exactly where he wants to be. Toji Musashi trying to fight it off, hopping to the side, trying to get that outside left. Kitana Waka, you can kind of see he's fighting it off with that inside right. He doesn't want to give up that grip, belt grip in any capacity. And he's going to try to push forward chest to chest. But here, this is where it gets awkward. Because Toji Musashi, he gets lower. Hips lower. You know, the feet are back in a good defensive stance. But the hips are lower. The shoulders are lower. And we can even compare them to his opponent and that is what's going to give him the slip because using this leverage he's going to get this arm up underneath he's going to break the grip on the belt no more of that it's already off and he's going to slide that up the body tochi musashi parrying that inside right with his own I mean, that inside left with his own outside right, pulling it up the body, and then he's going to immediately attack the belt afterwards. And after he attacks that belt, it's just a simple push for him. So this is the exact moment where Kitana Waka screws up. That left hand slides up the body, and now he gives up the inside. And this is where the match is over, basically. Because <laughs> even though in this freeze frame, Kitana Waka, he's square. It looks like he has a good position, but that stance is wide. He can't generate too much force forward if his stance is that wide. He needs to be driving those knees. He needs to be pumping it forward. He needs to have those shoulders a bit lower so he can lean forward into his opponent. But right now, he's stood up. He's stood up completely straight, giving up that inside right, outside left, and there's nothing he can do about it. Solid win for Tochi Musashi. Six and oh. And it doesn't look like anything is going to stop him. He's looking fantastic. I think it would be cool if in the next Kachi Clash, they added Julio. So now we're coming into day seven, halfway through the tournament almost. And Toji Musashi is looking like he's the man to beat. I need to scroll through and see if I can find him. But he's probably going to be fighting higher. Let's see. Kento. Uh, there's no Tochi Musashi here, so we gotta go a bit further. Konoyama, Tokshoryu. Gotta find Tochi Musashi, there he is. 6 and 0. Oh. Going up against Shimazu Umi. Shimazu Umi, a veteran of the ring. We already know what Tochi Musashi's uh, strategy is. He's going to try to go for that outside left. And we have the good view on it. Because we have that uh, that left side facing the camera. <laughs> yeah, I'm streaming. Shut up. I had to wait for him to say shut up before I said it. <laughs> Nah, no, y'all are good, I don't care. But Shimazu Umi versus Tochi Musashi. Here on day seven, Tochi Musashi. Oops. I wasn't on the right window. And then ready, Shimazu Umi. Oh, I gotta lower the volume too. And oh, well, we usually go full speed, so I pause it immediately. That's my bad. But uh already you could see attempt at the belt. Left outside. And at the rest of full speed. It doesn't matter that he got that left outside because that was exactly what Shimazu Umi wanted as well. Straight push out, chest to chest. Tochi Musashi couldn't do anything about that charge. And we'll try to see if anything goes wrong here, but I think it's just Shimazu Umi gets the better Tachi eye. He's just lower. And we can see he's positioned more like... He's scooping up. He's going forward. He's getting that inside left on the belt in just a moment. And he's like that back curve, that leg, like this entire position is really nice. Like he's 
completely absorbing the impact from Toji Musashi, who's, you, you can see it, just in the way they're positioned. Toji Musashi is arched forward, trying to go forward like this, whereas uh, Shimazu Umi is arched completely against the wave. Completely against the wave. There's nothing Toji Musashi can do to move him from this position. Sure, he gets that outside left, but Shimazu Umi gets exactly what he wants with that inside right. And just chest to chest, he bounces back off that Tachi. Well, he didn't even bounce. He just went straight through on that Tachi eye. There's not really much else to say about that match either. It's just Shimazu Umi, better position, better Tachi eye. Better win. Catches him, pushes him out. Holy cow! So much power out of Shimazu Umi. There was nothing Toji Musashi could do about that. And like I said, it was because of the way their bodies were positioned. He was arched, kind of like a, kind of like a shrimp. And uh, Shimazu Umi was the wave coming to gobble him up. <laughs> It's as simple as that. Moving into day eight now. Halfway through the tournament, Tochi Musashi, he's still six and one, looking pretty good for himself. Let's see if we can find him soon. That's Takakento Shimazu Umi. Uh, Tochi Maru. Here we go, Tochi Musashi versus Hokuseiho. Both men at six and one. So Tochi Musashi and Hokuseiho, both these men, really nice rookies, we're high on them. We really like both of these men. Hokuseiho, I'm a little lower on because uh, his Tachi eye is very lazy and we could talk about that in a different video, but uh, Toji Musashi at the very least, I'm liking him a lot. I didn't notice that, uh, what, what's the word? The way he goes for that outside left all the time consistently. Thank you. That's all there is, so after. <laughs> okay, thank you for the dinner. I need to take a bite of these uh, noodles and snossage. Pardon the interruption. Mm. That's really good. Is yeah. $10 worth? Not worth ten dollars, but that's good. I think it's more mostly in the olive oil. Olive oil. Olive oil in general is expensive anyway. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Hokuseiho Tochi Musashi. Let's see what happens here. Here we go, Hokuseiho and Tochi Musashi. Tochi Musashi, Tochi Musashi immediately dives for that left outside and tries to go for the throw, but Hokuseo is just too big to throw. Now they're kind of locked up here, inside right for uh, Hokuseo. Just chest to chest. Hokuseo pushing forward, surviving. Can't get the leg either, but he has the grip around the butt. Loses it, and now he just has that simple left outside that he does like to have anyway, but uh, Hokuseiho fighting it off there. Standing straight body to body. Tochi Musashi trying to go for another push, trying to get a grip on the... Uh, on that uh, part of the mawashi that goes between the butt cheeks. And you can see the... Uh, Gyoji is uh, correcting the belt. But from here, you have to wonder, can Tochi Musashi throw or push someone so large and heavy? And it looks like he can, but he can't push him all the way inside or right. Well, 
kind of inside, but uh, Hokuseo is trying to block that with his own inside left. This is a slow Yotsu match between these two guys. Not to bail, no problemo, Jonathan. Thank you for joining us. I appreciate the support. Ochi Musashi trying to lift him up at the edge now. Can't finish him off. Now it's Hokuseho on the counter attack. And get the crush down. Yori Taoshi for Hokuseho. Oh, that was a good one. You can pushing for Hokusashi. Now this match, and this isn't just me trying to be lazy and trying to get through this. But this match has a lot of different stages. But a lot of them don't really amount to anything. Because we see here, again, initially. Toshi Musashi kind of runs for that belt. He he doesn't just do like, you know, the big left foot to try to wrap around. He just ran. He ran off that Tachi eye because he knows that uh, Hokuseho is slow. And he tries to go for that throw immediately and then uses that momentum to get a better grip on this inside left or this outside left. And then from here, after that initial charge... There isn't really much else going on because we have to wait for Hokuseho and Tochi Musashi to basically do anything. You can see Hokuseho does have that inside right, and I think he's trying to go for a double inside so he can push up. But to Tochi Musashi, because he's lower and probably equal in power to Hokuseho, it's not working as well as he would like. And now, that was a bit of a misfire from a. Uh, Hokuseho, he did have both hands inside, but he lifted that right arm off, and that allowed Tochi Musashi to get this right hand in under the armpit so he can block that uh, left from being able to do anything. So now Tochi Musashi has the better grip, and with that left outside, he's going to try to go for another throw. He can't get a grip on the leg here either, and that was a very good idea, trying to go... For the grip on the leg, trying to get that, that was a very good idea because Hokuseho is not going to fall easily, and if you attack that base, he will go down. But Hokuseho, just, and I never thought I would say he's fast, but he's just fast enough to retreat that right side of his body away. Ooh, excuse me. Away from that potential grip. And then uses that big body of his to pull Tochi Musashi back up into this more neutral position. So after resetting here, Tochi Musashi tries another push forward, and you can see he gets a grip around the back. Like I said earlier, it's uh, on the part of the belt where, you know, it makes a T. And you got the uh and you got the butt cheeks. He's got a grip right here on that part of the belt. And that should, in theory, give you much more control on how you move your opponent. But because Hokuseho is just so large and in charge, it's very difficult for Tochi Musashi to actually exert any of that control, even with that inside right as well. And you can see Oguseho just trying to draw out this match a little bit longer. Gyoji checking the belt to make sure it's not getting untied because of that unusual grip on the back. Around the back. Tochi Musashi going for another push here, trying to go chest to chest. And he is getting a good lift up, but Hokuseho, his arm up underneath, trying to pull that inside right up so he loses the grip on the belt. And you can see it's kind of at an odd angle. It's, uh... He's basically doing everything he can to try to break this grip, whereas Tochi Musashi is doing everything he can to hold on. But that wrist has got to be at an odd angle. The forearm is being bent upwards uncomfortably. The elbow, you know, is practically even with the shoulder. And if you want to try doing that while, you know, using all of your force to move forward, you're going to find that it is very awkward. And he's going to stop his push right there. And actually gives up the grip on the belt because of how awkward that grip was. Oguseho, knowing that this this uh, left arm needs to be defensive, 
keeps it inside. You can see when Toshi Musashi pulled his arm up and out, Oguseho kept his arm exactly where it was. He was not going to let Toshi Musashi get back inside because Hokuseho is trying to force the double inside. Slows back down again. Hokuseho still with a okay stance here. He's not one you can easily throw. Trying to go for the push again with that inside right. And this is kind of where uh, Tochi Musashi loses it. He had the inside right right here. And then he wraps it around the back for double outside. Trying to push forward chest to chest. But his legs are already straight. He can't generate any more leverage than he already has. And so by giving up that outside right, or by going for that outside right and giving up the double inside to Hokuseho, that's where he fucked up. Because now he has no leverage going forward. He doesn't have any leverage in the front to try to tilt Hokuseho back. He gave all of that up to try to go for this last kill shot, and because it doesn't work here... Hokuseho is able to basically just walk it forward. And even though Toji Musashi does get this hand inside under the armpit, it's way too late. Double inside for a man who is bigger and probably as strong as you is going to be the death now. And we can see that right there. That's what killed him. If he kept a grip on the belt, that right inside, he might have stood a better chance. But because he didn't, he threw away any advantage he possibly generated, and as a result, Hokuseho gets the win. And I'm going to take a few more bites of my dinner, because I'm a hungry boy. So a good stamina match overall. Hopefully... A good rivalry in the future between these two. And it looks like it's working again. So now I know he fights against Chudano Umi at yes, Judo 6. Let's see. Here we go. Toji Musashi versus Chudano Umi. Both men at 6 and 2. Hokuseho is the sole leader. Be let in, but, he's gotta wait for but as we know, anything can happen. And I didn't realize that I had this big streak right here. I guess that's what people were yelling at me for. This big thing right here, right in the way. I thought it was just this down here that was annoying people. But no, it was this big thing right here. I didn't realize it was even there. So thank you for the chat to uh, yell at me for that one. And that's the kind of hijinks and shenanigans we get to on the Twitch side. Let me take another bite of my dinner. As we get into this match, Tochi Musashi versus Churano Umi. We'll start it back up before the Tashi Ai. Nice charge forward. Chest to chest, gets the left outside on the grip, and he gets the throwdown. Is that left outside? It's too dangerous for Tochi Musashi. Gets it right there, and pulls back for the win. So initially, he does have the better charge. The chest to chest, and even though, like, Churano Umi has a really nice grip on the belt right here. Immediately off the Tachi Ai gets this, and Tochi Musashi with this inside right... He's not exactly able to get it off the belt immediately, but he has a good enough force charge forward that he's able to push back Churana Umi. And there you can see he wraps around this right arm and he's going to start breaking the grip because this left elbow is being turned inside. Like, you know, usually you want your elbow, if I can uh, draw it out a little bit. If you can interpret it, you want your elbow, you know, like here's your torso. You want your elbow to be pointed out like that. And then your forearm inside or however, which way. But the way it's turning now is, you know, you have your torso like this. The elbow is being turned in. And that's very uncomfortable to be in. So because of that, uh, the way the elbow is being turned right now, 
this grip that inside left needs to be broken or he's just going to lose it basically. So because of that, you know, left inside becoming uh, quickly disadvantageous because of the way it's being turned, Tochi Musashi is able to push his man all the way back to the edge of the ring. And this is where you can even see that left hand is not up on the belt. It's up high attacking and he's going to go for the belt here. Now that uh, Chirano Umi, I would assume, is going to uh, start pushing forward. And when he pushes forward, that's going to give Tochi Musashi an ability to reach down and get a grip on the belt. And that's going to happen within this next split second right here. You can see Tochi Musashi already has the grip on the belt. And at the same time that Chirano Umi pushes forward to try to reclaim that grip on the belt, you can see that center of gravity all the way out here, his feet back here. An easy, easy time for Tochi Musashi who's already got that grip on the belt and is going for the pull down. So another really quick and easy win for Tochi Musashi who was pretty much in control the whole time. <laughs> so if we want to watch that just full speed one more time, we have uh, Tochi Musashi on the better push and then recognizing when to step back for the pull. Just really nice move for Tochi Musashi as he moves on to 7-2. and two. Coming into day 10, is it? Yes, day 10. Ow. Mm. I bit my tongue. I hate my life. Mm. I'm so sad. <laughs> Let's see, day 10, he goes up against Tok Shoryu. And I also... So the... Survive. Makushita. Fighting your cheek is worse because then you keep doing it like an idiot. Oh, yeah, no. You're totally right about that. All right, let me take another few bites of my, uh, my dinner. Because I realized, when I start my streams at 6 o'clock, that means I kind of uh, stream through dinner time. And that's kind of annoying. But it is also just a better time slot. For me, at least, to stream at. So here we have Tochi Musashi on the verge of getting his debut Kachi Koshi. Going up against former champion Tok Shoryu. Musashi on the left, Tok Shoryu in the red. Tochi Musashi getting the grip on the belt immediately and using that to win. Here we go, Tochi Musashi. <laughs> Just quick and e again, quick and easy. Tochi Musashi, you're going to see it immediately. Do I even need to draw it out? Big step to the left, and he gets the grip on the belt immediately off the Tachi Eye right there. And he's going to use that in a kind of a Henka maneuver. Because he doesn't really take Tok Shoryu at the Tachi Eye. He does step to the side here. So I would call that a Henka Light. Gets a grip on the left belt, and... uh. You know, follow up, push forward, and this is just a better position to be in. He's got the shoulders, hips, and feet. Well, they're all square, but the feet aren't, you know, pursuing. They're all square. They're all pushing forward. Tok Shoryu has everything facing in the wrong direction, going this way. <laughs> instead of facing his opponent. So there's only one way to go, and that is out of the ring. Kochi Musashi with uh, Kinda Henka. You could get mad at him for henga -ing there. I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't fault you for that. Let me take my last bite of dinner. Uh, 
to my dinner was this, uh, was this like infused pasta with, uh, Cajun seasoned olive oil. It was really good. The pasta was okay. Not worth the price. I don't think, but the, I think it's the olive oil that's carrying it. Cause it's all the spice and the flavor. Yeah, that was really nice. And a nice win for Toshi Musashi to get his Kachikoshi. Which, again, you can be mad at it. I'm not. He's a rookie that got a winning record. And he's going to keep flying higher and higher in this next match against Koto Kuzan. Koto Kuzan versus Toshi Musashi. Oh, thank you for taking him. So here we go. Koto Kuzan, Toji Musashi. Toji Musashi immediately getting that left outside grip and using that to push forward, but losing it as Koto Kuzan gets deflected once again, and it's just regaining that left outside for Toji Musashi. That does it. Are we going to carve pumpkins later? Nobody's answering me. <laughs> I get ignored in this house. Koto Kuzan and Toji Musashi. Like I said, right off the Tachi Eye. Toji Musashi outside left, and he's going to use that to straight push forward. But then he gets turned around a bit, regains that grip, and pushes uh, Koto Kuzan out of the ring. So what happens here? Using this left outside... Keeping that grip on the belt, he's able to pull himself in. Is the sock coming loose? Okay. Yeah, he keeps that grip on the outside left, and because he keeps the grip on the outside left, he is able to pull himself in and go for the push here. And we can see Koto Kuzan, that hand to the face, he's not able to release himself from the grasp, so he's pulling backwards. He's trying to pull away so he can get the space as a Yotsu guy so he can just keep assaulting the face over and over again. But as he's pulling, he's pulling Kotokuza or uh, he's pulling Tochi Musashi with him. So using this, Tochi Musashi is able to get, you know, that chest to the chest. And even though it's very sloppy right here, Kotokuzan actually gets the elbow to the head and is able to push Tochi Musashi off to the side where then Koto Kuzan is going to be able to re-attack. And this is exactly what Koto Kuzan wants. He's no longer being gripped. Now he can go for the Oshizumo, attack the face. But immediately when he goes to attack the body, he gets the forearm down and in. I can't really see what that left arm is doing, but I have to assume it's something similar trying to attack the chest here. Toji Musashi immediately swings for that outside left, and he gets the grip on that again. And even though he gets pushed all the way to the edge, Tochi Musashi uses that grip. You can see he's moving his legs forward, but he's keeping his body square against the attack. And because Koto Kuzan can't really do anything against it, he gets completely deflected. So you can see Koto Kuzan, he was over here going like, rah. He bounces in and completely bounces off of Tochi Musashi after being kind of tossed to the side. So that was a really nice deflection from Tochi Musashi right there. And then afterwards is just the follow up, pushing forward, easy win. And that is nine wins now for Tochi Musashi. And at this point in the tournament, being nine and two in his debut, he's looking really good. And if I want to see the Yusho race was like at this time, he was the sole leader because Hokuseiho lost two in a row. And now he has to fight Kageyaki, who is one win behind. So at day 12, Bottom of the fourth he fights against Kageyaki, who is Judio 4. So we have to go a little bit longer. That's Takakento, Hideno Umi, Kageyaki, Tochi Musashi. So we know Kageyaki likes the Oshizumo, but can do the Yotsu. We know that Tochi Musashi always wants to dive for that outside. Oops, excuse me, I'm burping a little bit. Always wants to dive for that outside left. And you have to ask yourself, how is this going to go? Is Kageyaki going to keep Tochi Musashi at bay and 
win through Yotsuzumo? Or are they going to devolve into a uh, chest-to-chest, belt-to-belt match and uh, Toji Musashi win with a throw? Well, let's see what happens here. Immediately gets the left outside and uses all of that momentum to toss Kageyaki to the side. And it's just that quick. It's bing, bang, boom. Right there. Right there. Gets the grip on the belt and he's going to use that to throw. Because he's already shifting his weight this way. You can see he's leaning this way. He's shifting this way. Kageyaki, he tries to get the double inside up to the face. But if the grip is strong enough, it doesn't matter how hard you push at the face because that grip is going to stay there. And it really is just this easy for Toji Musashi. Toji Musashi gets the grip and pulls back with that right. You can see he swung the hips back, pulled back with that right foot, and is pulling with that right hand on the shoulder as well. He's pulling... Kageyaki, right hand on the shoulder, because again, Kageyaki, if we want to draw it out here, you know, you know, feet down here, he had the shoulder, the elbows in and up and inside like this. And because of that, that allows his shoulders to get attacked because both of his elbows are down and in. That allows Tochi Musashi to go, hey there, buddy, how you doing? And then throw him down. And that's exactly what happened there. Sometimes when you lean on me and lend a shoulder, you're gonna get slapped to the side. And that is another win for Tochi Musashi, who earns 10! 10 wins for Tochi Musashi, who is still in the lead. And coming into day 13, it is... Uh, let's see. He was ahead by two wins. So Tochi Musashi basically needs the win and everyone else needed to lose in order for him to secure the Yusho. So Tochi Musashi coming into day 13 going up against Tohakuryu. Now it's time to catch up on trying to read the Let's see, that's a little bit too far. Let's see, it is a Judeo 3 we're looking for. No. Let's see, Tochi Musashi versus Tohakuryu. So like I said, at this point, Tochi Musashi... Basically just needs to win, so he can stay in first in the Yusho race. Toji Musashi going high, getting pushed back, tries for that outside left, gets pulled in, and gets the chest to chest. And that's kind of the mistake that was made there. Tohakuryu pulls him in for the chest to chest. Watch him pull, attempting a Kataskashi, I think, and that just brings Tochi Musashi in to the chest, getting the pull down. So, right there. That's where it happens. Just a solid win for Tochi Musashi, staying solid throughout that match, but I think it was more Tohakuryu attempting the pull when he had no room to pull. So right off the Tachi Eye, we could see Tohakuryu actually has the better Tachi Eye. He attacks the face straight on, kind of like Kageyaki did. And uh, Toji Musashi, he's hopping up again. He's trying to hop over to the side so he can get the grip on the belt like a little bunny rabbit. But that's not going to work here because now Tohakuryu is holding him literally at an arm's length. Attacking the neck and he's going to pull this back to try to attack the face again. And with that... Toji Musashi does resist with his own right hand to the neck but... Tohakuryu, more experienced in this style, pushes forward, and that's where Tochi Musashi slaps at the belt. He goes, whap, right there. Tries to get to the belt, giving him a nice smack on the booty on the way there. And uh, to because of that, Tohakuryu gets turned a little bit, breaks the grip by immediately attacking up into the chest right here. You can see going up high, and he's going for a slap to the face as well. So, that Oshizumo trying to put in as much work as possible. But right here, 
And this is kind of uh, standard for how you would want to attack this. You want to pull down on the arm and pull down on the head if you want to go for the Kataskashi. But he doesn't have a good enough grip on either thing. So when Tohakuryu attempts this move, he just pulls Tochi Musashi down into the chest and allows Tochi Musashi to push forward. And I mean, there really isn't anything else to say about the match from that point onward. Toji Musashi getting pulled down into the chest is allowed a good Yotsu grip against an Oshizumo guy. Pushes forward. 11 and 2. 11 and 2. If Hokuseiho would have lost today, then that would have clinched the Yusho, but we still have to wait one That's true. Because Hokuseiho won his match on this day, Tochi Musashi has to wait another day to clinch that Yusho, but that would be the last time we see him win for the tournament. But that doesn't matter because he still wins the Yusho anyway as we go into day 14 where he fights against fellow rookie Atami Fuji. Still have the Ur Dragon. Here we go. And then I also have Tommy Fuji to have just needs the Kachi Koshi here, whereas uh, Tochi Musashi, I'm pretty sure at this point in the tournament, already won the Yu Show. I'm pretty sure by the time he fights this fight, he's already won the Yu Show. Here we go. A Tommy Fuji versus the Yu Show winner. Yep, there it is. Tommy Fuji keeping completely stable against the attack of Tochi Musashi. And we could see, again, Tochi Musashi, he's going to do this little bunny hop here off the Tachi Ai, which is not going to work that well. He tries to hop to the right this time instead of to the left. I'm not sure exactly what he was trying there, but, uh, you know, at a slower speed. Like I said, he's going to hop this way to the right instead of his usual hop to the left so he can get that grip around the side and get a grip on the belt. So gotta wonder, what was he thinking here? Both of these guys are far back from that white line, which is very unusual for sumo in general. But uh, when Toji Musashi hops to the right instead, I gotta wonder what he was, what he might have been going for here. Don't know. But what we do know is that Atami Fuji is lower Shoulders are lower, hips about the same. You now, if your feet can't get much lower than on the plane of the dohyo, but uh, Atami Fuji is just lower. And as Atami Fuji basically catches this Tachi Ai, they both leap forward at each other. Like Atami Fuji hopped forward a bit, Toji Musashi hopped forward a bit. A very unusual Tachi Ai. But either way, Atami Fuji catches him, immediately gets the inside right. Toji Musashi trying to go for this outside left. And it's kind of uh, not working out for Toji Musashi because Atami Fuji has the inside right in a better favorable position. Toji Musashi attempts to go defensive on the grip right there. Tries to break it instead of opting to grip the belt, which probably would have been better for him. And because he goes for more defense that he seemingly doesn't really know what to do with. He kind of just gets pushed back and loses. And by the time he does get the grip on the belt, it's already way too late because the Tachi Ai is won right here by Atami Fuji. Atami Fuji gets the right hand inside right there. And at this point, because the Tachi Ai was relatively even and Tochi Musashi doesn't have his favorite grip, he just gets pushed back. And he did try to pull back and try to get the grip on the belt, but Tochi Musashi really had nothing doing there. Loses on the day he wins the Yusho, which is still a day early. And Atami Fuji earns that coveted Kachi Koshi as hopefully he inches closer and closer towards the top division. And now we will be heading into the final match before we start playing the Banzuke guessing game. Is it day 15 bout against Keen Bozon? Description of the video is my push. 11 wins. Which again, we had uh let's see. Horn says dummy. We already had him win the U show. Let's see. This is the uh, little speech they give. Uh, no, Keen Bozon is much lower on the Bonzuke. One second. I gotta find him now. 
He bowls on his Judeo 12, so probably all the way down here. What is happening here? Gotta go back very far for this match. Holy cow. There we go. Keen Bolzon versus Tochi Musashi. Keen Bolzon, another rookie. Making his debut here. Doesn't even have the top knot. Tochi Musashi is going to lose this match. Keen Bolzon is going to get his 10th win. But uh, the question is, what goes wrong here for Tochi Musashi? Even though he already put up a lot of strong wins, why doesn't he win this match? And let's find out. Keen Bolzon gets the inside right and uses that to throw Tochi Musashi. So he loses the grip on the belt and uses his own outside left to throw Tochi Musashi out. So let's see that one more time at full speed. Keen Bolzon gets that grip on the belt, doesn't relinquish it, instead slipping up the body. And right there, you can kind of see that inside right from Keen Bolzon. Even though it's up on the back and not on the belt, that's good enough leverage to keep Tochi Musashi from throwing him instead. And that's kind of what happens here. So right here, a little bit of a misfire for Keen Bolzon doesn't really grab the belt, whereas uh, Tochi Musashi is already diving for that left outside and is using this right hand up on the chest, so he can probably try to go for a pull off the Tachi Ai again. It's not really going to work because he does go for that pull. Tochi Musashi immediately, I mean, uh, Keen Bolzon immediately follows it up. And now Tochi Musashi, he does have that favored grip. You can see it right there. Favored outside left grip. He's trying to push forward now inside right, but the inside right from Keen Bozon after he caught himself at that Tachi Ai, he's going to use that inside right to kind of lock up that arm and put it in a more unfavorable spot. So like I drew out earlier where, you know, you, like here's your torso. You kind of want your elbow to be outside while you're gripping something. Instead... It's going to be, here's the torso, it's going to be uh, pushed way up here. So now you kind of can't get as much leverage. It's not going to be pushed inside like it was in that one match. But being all the way out here means you're really only generating force from your shoulders and your forearms. Your biceps are taken completely out of the equation. And that makes it a lot more difficult to move your opponent around. So having that... And, well, the fact that he is going to lose the grip on the belt right there on this throw means that he is in a very unfavorable spot. And he's going to catch himself, swing that back foot. Oopsies. He's going to swing that back foot right around. Like you can see it was up in the air and he wah, catches himself. And now he's kind of stumbling this way to re-catch himself. After stumbling around, manages to secure the footing again. But now it's still not that favorable because this inside right from uh, Keen Bolzon is acting as defense and offense. It's making sure that uh, Tochi Musashi doesn't get full value out of that outside left, which is exactly uh, Tochi Musashi's you know bread and butter, his best grip. So from this position, Keen Bolzon is able to dive that right or uh, that left hand down, get a grip. And now he's the one pulling up here, whereas uh, Toji Musashi, once again, that right hand, whoops, inside around the back. I'm not sure if it's on the belt or if it's around the back, kind of like how uh, Keen Bolzon has it, but they're matching each other when it comes to their belt grips. And you can see Toji Musashi, he was rocking himself back and forth a little bit, back and forth, so he can try to rock in this grip a little bit tighter, get that grip in a little bit tighter. But uh, I think it works in Keen Bolzon's favor because Keen Bolzon is just kind of, you know, letting it happen and locking in his own grip a little bit deeper. And that's how, and you can see Tochi Musashi loses the grip on the inside right. He's getting thrown to the side, stronger outside left for Keen Bolzon is going to get the throw here and get the 10th win for Keen Bolzon. So... Tochi Musashi, 11 wins, 4 losses, definitely not a bad initial tournament, but 
you do have to wonder how consistent is that performance going to be, especially considering he kind of was figured out just across the span of the tournament. And if any of these guys do watch, uh, you know, game film, then how quickly are they going to be? How quickly are they going to figure out, oh, he wants the outside left. So let's counter that, you know? So for Tochi Musashi, once again, a great U show. He had a lot of strong wins, most of it coming off of the back of that outside left. Ahenka, uh, maybe he needs to learn from Chio Shoma a little bit. <gasps> Ooh, excuse me. But uh, overall, really good performance for him. Debut U show. And, uh, you know, as Molotov said in my Twitch chat, this is the wrong Tochi we're covering. Well, fun fact, Tochi Noshin also had a Judeo U show debut. So... Both of the Tochis are following in the same footsteps. Now, I am going to take a short break while I uh, go to the bathroom and as we prepare for playing the Guess the Bonzuke game. So I will be right back and I will uh, over here on this side. Let's just do the uh, starting soon. BR. Oh, that's an E. BRB. So I will be right back as we are about to play the Banzuke guessing game. Give me just a few minutes. All right, I'll just be setting up the Google Sheet for my uh, guess the Bonzuke. The last one of the year, November 2022.
Alrighty. And let's move my predictions over. Alrighty. So, if you know what the Bonzuke is, you know how to play the Bonzuke guessing game. We're going to guess who falls where on the Bonzuke. And using statistics and likelihoods and all that stuff, we are going to try to figure out where people might fall, basically. Do you gamble on Tedder Nofuji being back and earn huge or not? Uh, I don't know, honestly. But we do know that Tedder Nofuji is going to be Yokozuna. Saka Keisho is going to be Ozeki. Shodai is going to be Ozeki. But we no longer have an Ozeki 2. Mitake Yumi is falling to Sekiwake. And because he is falling to Sekiwake... Oh, no, we're not doing Kachi Clash. That's not until the next tournament. So let me pull up that Discord in a second. So because Mitake Yumi is falling from Ozeki, he has to occupy the lowest possible Sekiwake spot. And that means that uh, he is going to be in Sekiwake to West no matter what. Now, what that means is, uh, what is going to happen with the other Sekiwakes? Well, Wakataka Kage, Oshoryu, they're going to maintain their spots easily. All right, he's uh, highlighted red because that was his debut up there. <laughs> oh, uh, we should also, instead of uh, going through all of this first, uh, we have to highlight who are losers and who are winners. That way, it's a little bit easier. Abi Ichinojo. I'm going to highlight the losers first, just to make it a bit easier visually on how people should fall. Got a lot of losers this tournament, holy cow. All these guys were red. And all of the winners are going to be green. That way we know we don't miss any names, because I've accidentally skipped names before as well. Oh, still piece of stream, my bad. I was already on the YouTube side at least, so that's good. Here we go. So, we have to kind of measure out where these losers are going to fall and where the uh, upper guys are going to also place. So, I think... The, the One of the bigger questions is going to be, is there still going to be two Komusubi slots open? And I feel like the answer could be yes. It uh, kind of depends on how everyone else falls. Like Daesho, he's only realistically going to fall one rank to Komusubi. Abi, he is uh, falling, you know, probably all the way down here because he was 0015. His surgeries were successful, by the way. Uh, Ichinojo would fall... You know, from Komusubi to Maegashita, maybe two. We could put him right there for now. Kiribayama would move up. But the question is, would he move up to Sekiwake and fill out the Sekiwake slots or not? Because that's the, that's the thing when it comes to the Banzuke. They want to make sure that it is even. The Sanyaku slots are even, so the rest of it can also be even. So... If Kiribayama were to be brought up to Sekiwake, that means there would be three Komusubi to even out the fact that there's a Yokozuna at the very top. Kind of like how at the last Banzuke, there were three Ozekis, a Yokozuna, three Sekiwake, three Komusubi. That way it's even. Here we have only two Ozeki, three Sekiwake. So that means there would need to be uh, either two Komusubi or... Uh, there could be four Komusubi. We don't know. And that's, uh... Or there could be four Sekiwake. And one Komusubi. Or two Komusubi, rather. So, 
that's kind of uh, where the difficulty is going to come from when it comes to trying to actually guess this Bonzuke. And if I'm looking at what other people have said, uh, it looks like we have a lot of people guessing there is going to be four Komusubi, which is probably more likely than anything else. And it looks like we only have like two other guesses that I can look at thus far. So I'm not going to exactly copy them. I'm just looking to see if there are even Komusubis falling in specific spots. But uh, from what we do have, Kiribayama probably moving up to just another Komusubi slot. Tobizaru would then occupy another one. Midori Fuji would either stay at M1 or fall. Kotonowaka would move up. Meisei would move up whether it's half a rank or one full rank. Or maybe Midori Fuji falls down one rank. Tamawashi easily occupies the other Komusubi slot. And that's kind of what uh, what's the rationale for the balance. Just to make it easier to look at, pretty much. Because to have, like, a Maegashita 17 east and no west would look kind of ugly. So they want an even number up in the Sanyaku if possible. Let's see. Tamawashi Uda would move up to Maegashita 2. Nishikigi might move down. Takeyasu would definitely move up. It's just a matter of how high. So we'll uh, slot him, well, maybe not there, but uh, maybe over here. We, we can scooch people around. We know we can. Let's see. Takara Fuji would fall. Sarana Umi would go up. Wakamoto Haru would go up. Endo would either go down or stay the same. So let's make him go down to Maegashita 7. Aoyama is definitely going down. Onosho is definitely going down. Toji Noshin might stay the same or go down. We don't actually know. Okuto Fuji is going to move up. Yogiryu would move up, but not that far. Otoeko would move down. Nishiki Fuji is going to move up. Takanosho would move up, but not that far. Koto Shoho would move down or stay the same. Chio Taidu is definitely moving down. Okino Umi is definitely moving down. Ryuden is going up. Chiyamamoto is going down. Takayama is going down to Judio. Tsurugisho is going down to Judio. Mitoryu is going down to Judio. Let's see. Oho. Might stay the same rank, might go down, you never know. Yutakiyama. Chiyoshoma is going to move up. Yoshi might occupy that M16 spot. Hirado Umi could as well. It's going to be tight. And then, of course, uh, Judio promotions. So we're definitely going to have Azumaru in the mix. Kageyaki, maybe. That's going to be the other uh, unusual thing, too, is possible Judio promotions. I think realistically it's only Azumaru and maybe Kageaki. And we color those guys blue. So Azumaru. Kageaki. That means we're missing one slot up here if... Well, I mean, Yutakiyama has to fall. Atami Fuji could make his debut. It's hard to say. I can uh, take a quick peek at what other people are thinking. And uh, let's see. Some people do think a Tommy Fuji could make it. That would be a pretty insane jump, but we've seen we've seen sillier things. Alrighty. Pink golden boson. I don't know. Let's see. I do think Atami Fuji has a chance, though. Or rather, it would have to be him, rather. Let's copy him and uh, scooch him up somewhere. So, usually it's easiest to work from top to bottom. But I think if we start at the bottom, it'll be easier to scooch people around. So, Hirado Umi at 7 and 8 can definitely stay there. Yoshi has to fall, but he doesn't have to fall that far. 
And then we have uh, other scores like Ichi Yamamoto, 6 and 9. Again, he doesn't have to fall that far. Abi might be too harsh on because he's going to fall. We just don't know. You know, he's 0 15 out for injury. We don't exactly know how far he's going to fall. So we do have to make room for the promotions. Okino Umi, he fell from M12. He doesn't have to fall that far. Ichi Yamamoto, he fell from M13. You know, falling only one rank with a 6 and 9, that, that happens a lot. So here we, this is probably where we're going to start scooching in these guys. The Azumaru, Kageaki, let's see, Chiyo Taidu. He only had a 6 and 9 score too, so he could easily go up there. Whoopsies. And then this is where we could start scooching in Azumaru, Kageyaki, Atami Fuji, because they need to go somewhere. They need to be in this top division. And Hirado Umi is not going to get promoted. Teretsuyoshi could realistically fall only half of a rank off of that 6 and 9 to just Maegashita 15 West, so Atami Fuji can fill up Maegashita 16 East. But I feel like this is a little bit cleaner. And this is where we're going to start having a logjam of losers. So here, I think, because Ichi Yamamoto is Maegashita 13, he'll fall to Maegashita 14. Oho, probably going to stay the same rank. Then we have a Okino Umi, needs to fall at least a rank with his 6 and 9. Chiyo Taidu, that means he needs to scooch up here. Means Koto Eiko and Ono Sho are not going to fall that far. Ono Sho might have a little bit easier on him too. So that means Koto Shoho. I mean, alternatively, Koto Shoho could stay at Maegashita 11. Chiyo Taidu. Chiyo Taidu could uh, just scooch right down in here. You would fall one full rank. Ono Sho falls right here. Koto Shoho falls half of a rank. Koto Eiko falls two ranks. Let's see. Takara Fuji. He's not going to fall the full five. Takara Fuji is not going to fall all the way to Maegashita 10. Chiyo Shoma, on the other hand, this would be a nice promotion for him. Koji Noshin 7 and 8. He doesn't need to fall that far. Aoyama 6 and 9. Oopsies. Mm, actually, Abi could fall around here at Maegashita 10, and I think it would fit. Tochinoshin and Aoyama, I think if anything, they'll flip-flop spaces. Aoyama needs to fall a little bit further. Takanosho scooches right above them. Myogiryu, Takanosho right there. And then we have, uh, you know, Takara Fuji, Endo, and Nishikigi all falling down. Nishikigi would definitely take the easiest fall of the three, but then there's still a gap right there. Which Ryuden, he doesn't need to go that high. Let's see. Nishiki Fuji would still be above Ryuden, though. Let's see. Endo realistically could stay at the same rank as well. But there really isn't anyone else that can fill in these spots without getting snubbed. Like, Ryuden could fall to Maegashita 7, but that would be a... Would that be a snub? I don't really think so. Because he went 11 and 4, so that's a plus 7, moving up 5 ranks. That That's kind of a snub. So maybe he moves over to Maegashita 6. Endo stays the same rank. Takata Fuji and Nishikigi. This is being really easy on Takata Fuji if he only falls to Maegashita 7. But Nishikigi... Even that seems like too harsh for Nishikigi, so Endo might even fall a half of a rank. Nishikigi falls... Two and a half ranks. And then we can kind of scooch people down. Like uh, Nishiki Fuji 10 and 5 can definitely come up five ranks. Hokuto Fuji is going to be above him. <laughs> Wakamoto Haru getting log jammed up here. Ichi Nojo, I don't think he's going to fall that far. Idori Fuji, I think he comes down, but like it's still a log jam at the top here. There's a little gap here that's a little. Difficult to fill. Like Sarano Umi 9 and 6. Wakamoto Haru 10 and 5 from Maegashita 6. 
Like, if these guys get log jammed, then they get log jammed. But uh, Sarano Umi needs to move up, you know, at least a rank. Like, they might do this to Sarano Umi, like, just a rank and a half off of a 9 and 6, which would be pretty light. But that does make things fall a little bit smoother. Wakamoto Haru, though, I think he needs a little more room. Because, again, I don't think Ichinojo is going to fall that far, and neither will Midori Fuji. I think they're both going to be sitting at M2. But there's no room for everyone else at the top, so... Some people have to get snubbed. They have to get log jammed. Unless they open up a third Komusubi slot, which... There's no way they would. And putting one of these guys into Sekiwake at Komusubi wouldn't solve the issue either. Because we'd still have a log jam at Magashita 1. So maybe Ichinojo does get smacked down. Maybe Midori Fuji does get a little bit harder, harsher of a smackdown. Meisei moves up half of a rank, but now we still need to scooch people down, and I feel like I'm not really comfortable scooching many other people down here. It's like... Nishiki Fuji, 10 and 5, can sit over here easily. Okuto Fuji 10 and 5 for Maegashita 8. I feel like that's a snub. Sadano Umi only moving up a half of her, like, one rank off of a 9 and 6. I mean, that, that does happen. It, it's a log jam up at the top. Akamoto Haru only going up two ranks. And this is where we can actually ask Banzuke. How many times does a nine and a, a ten and five from Maegashita six? How many times do they only move up two ranks? See, most of the time they move up into the Sanyaku. There's never been a snub that hard where they move up only into Maegashita four. Baruto moved up in the Maegashita three west, so I feel like that has to happen. Then we can also look at uh. No, Komusubi 6 and 9. Komusubi's with the 6 and 9. Okay. Mostly to Maegashita 1 and 2. Mostly to Maegashita 2. There has been a number of jumps to Maegashita 3 and 4. Even once to 5, but that was in uh, 1940. So maybe it's not too far out of the wheelhouse to put Ichinojo down there. Midori Fuji, I want to ask about Midori Fuji as well. Maegashita 1, 7, and 8. Most of the time they fall to Maegashita 2. Rarely to Maegashita 3 and 4 once with Kotsuna Waka, but it has happened. That was a former Sekiwake Colton Owaka, not the current Colton Owaka that we know. So I guess this can happen. Like, this is one of those, like, throw your hands up in the air and be like, I guess. Uda can definitely scooch down. Takayasu slots in. And this is being really hard on the losers in Ichinojo and Midori Fuji, but I feel like this is the most fair to everyone on the Banzuke. I feel like this is the only way it can happen. Maybe even take a step further, like... Eh, eh, eh. I feel like this is the only way things can be right. And I don't want to look too much further into it because then I'm going to start second-guessing myself and being like, oh, it could have been like this, it could have been like that. I kind of just want to go with my gut instinct here of what we've already fallen to. So I feel like this Bonzuke is fine. Tommy Fuji, a bit of a stretch. Now let me uh, go see what other people are saying in their Bonzuke guesses.
Uh, sumo games. So we have uh, one person saying each Nojo will fall to Maegashita 4, Midori Fuji to Maegashita 3, but the other side of it, which I think is a little harsh. Uda only moving up one rank, Wakamoto Haru up to Maegashita 2. So that's where my discrepancy is. I have Wakamoto Haru uh, not leapfrogging Uda, which I think Uda definitely has priority if it's to move up to Maegashita 2 over Wakamoto Haru, who got a 10 and 5 for Maegashita 6. Like, I think that's much more fair to Wakamoto Haru. Uh, one man even has Daisho falling to Komusubi 2, which uh, I don't really think is going to happen. I mean, Tamawashi might... Mm. Yeah, the coin flip between Daisho and Tamawashi here... Maybe. I'll write that down, though. Uh, the rest of this, though, it seems like it's falling the same way. Bring you down. They're being very generous to Azumaru and theirs, but uh, Oho staying the same rank, I think, is very likely. Being very kind to a lot of losers at the bottom of this Bonzuke. Abi is kind of the biggest question, I think. Because however far he falls is going to affect how everyone else stands. One person has Abi falling to Maegashita 8, another to Maegashita 10. Whereas I think if he falls here, that's more appropriate. Like, I think Takanosho and Miyogiri will be above Abi 100%. And Endo... Nishikigi and Takara Fuji don't fall under Abi. So again, I think this is the best way it might fall. Hmm. Yeah, I don't want to think about it too much longer than I already have, so I think this is the prediction we're going to be going with for the Banzuke guessing game. And with that, I think I will be ending the stream for the night because uh, me and Princess are going to go out to her cousin's birthday party for a little while. So that is going to be it for me. Thank you so much for joining the stream on the YouTube side. I hope you enjoyed the breakdown, and I hope you enjoyed watching me play the Guess the Bonzuke guessing game. Let me know what your guesses are for the Guess the Bonzuke, and I'll be sure to, uh, you know, keep in mind what your assessments are. So thank you for joining us. I will certainly catch you cats later.